Hi everybody, Richard Travis here again at Artificial Lawyer TV. Uh, today we're doing another product walkthrough. Uh, this time it's a little bit different. Um, we're looking at the winter 2021 um, release of Agiloft. Um, with us to tell us a bit more about it is Andy Wishart. Hi Andy. Hey Richard, good to be here. Thank you for inviting me on. We're delighted and excited to announce the um, Agiloft 2021 winter release um, that we're releasing today. Um, you may recall back in uh, March earlier this year, we had our spring release that was about uh, design and ease of use. We launched a new user interface. Um, so today for the winter release, it's all about connected experiences. And um, you know why are we focusing on connected experiences? Well, I think, you know, it's time for us to rethink about our, our attitudes about contracts. You know, for too long, we've viewed contracts as a shield, um, often relegated to sort of dead end digital representations of their paper form. And, um, you know, we are trying to rethink the approach to contracts, thinking about contract data as a digital asset, if you like, that, represents the, the DNA of a relationship, the sort of form and the structure. Um, so we're bringing this to life. We think our connected experiences uh, focus in this release is in many ways sort of, I'm uh, showing this elevation from Agileoft and CLM as a legal tech solution to an enterprise tech solution. And these connected experiences you know, we're, we're providing the, the, the capabilities that our customers and their customers, their partners, their, their suppliers, those capabilities that they need to um, work with contracts in the tools that they know and trust. So that's what the connected experiences um, theme is about in this release. Gotcha. Okay, well, let's have a look. Let's do a bit of a walkthrough. Uh, and then I can ask you a couple of questions at the end. Sure. So we are going to do things uh, a little bit differently for this um, product walkthrough. Um, uh, let me just share my screen here. Yeah, so uh, what we're going to do here is um, for the product walkthrough, we're going to follow a fictitious company. Um, the company is called VivaTech. Um, uh, they are working on a high value complex deal with one of their customers, which is called Biosphere. So to showcase the new connected experiences in the Agileoff Winter 2021 release, we're going to follow the contract through its life cycle. Uh, and in fact, we're going to pick up the story on the last day of the quarter, um, the team at VivaTech, they're a sell side team working on this contract. They're anxiously awaiting the, um, the news of whether the deal has been signed. Uh, and we're really excited to announce that the new Agile Offer Microsoft Teams will now deliver notifications directly um, into Teams, uh, such as when the contract uh, needs, needs approval, you know, perhaps when the contract uh, requires sign-in, or in this case, when the deal is signed. So Agile Offer for Microsoft Teams is going to really help sort of reduce those approval cycle times uh, keep keep the team on the same page and and sort of avoid having people dig through their inbox for notification emails. But also, I think importantly, we're at a moment in time uh, whereby a m much of our sort of social interaction with our colleagues is done on tools like this um, because we're not able to be in person. So it's it's enabling people to celebrate achievements as well uh, all together in one place. So really excited about the Microsoft Teams for um, uh, Teams app uh, for Agileoft. Now uh, let's wind back time a little bit for our friends at VivaTech and follow the contract on its journey and touch on some of the other enhancements that are coming to the release. And we start maybe a month earlier um, here in Salesforce with a request. Um, so with the new Agile of 2021 winter release. We're also excited to announce the launch of a new Agile of app on the Salesforce app exchange that um, uh, enables you to connect 
Salesforce to agile often fewer clicks and less complexity than before so that your teams can get up requesting contracts within say 15 minutes of, of installing the app. So um, the new agile offer Salesforce, again, another part of that connected experiences within this release. All right, let's continue to follow that contract. Um, after the request was submitted in Salesforce, Agilov generated a draft contract uh, from a template, but we know that deals of this size um, uh, are heavily negotiated. And um, so we're also delighted to announce a new redesigned Agilov contract assistant for Microsoft Word. And it's going to help reduce negotiation cycles and improve accuracy and contain and reduce risk as well. Um, and users can compare current clauses in the contract with clauses in their clause library, or here we can see clauses um, from contracts within the repository. So we'll search and find those clauses as well. We've got some neat new indicators for standard or fallback clauses and guidance to help you know, guide the negotiator on the right clause to use. And then this improved clause compare as well. So we're super proud of this new redesigned uh, connected experience for um, supporting that negotiation use case. A couple of other things, um, we've made a significant improvement to our Tableau connector. Um, so in the last example, we saw that VivaTech lawyer swapping the standard indemnity clause with a fallback from the library. Um, and that enables us to track those clauses. Um, that enables us to uh, see which clauses are being negotiated most frequently. And the improved Tableau connector enables our customers like VivaTech um, to create these visualizations. And we can see that it is indeed the indemnity clause um, that, that is being negotiated most. Okay, so finally to our last connected experience, we find ourselves back here in Word. Um, and this is one that I'm personally excited about. I've, I've been uh, uh, heavily involved in, in this new connected experience. Um, and it's a new tool for creating and modifying contract templates. And we've uh, extended our Agileoft contract assistant for Microsoft Word with a point and click template designer. So add in variables or conditional clauses. It's all super easy. Um, it's also color coded. The markup in the document is color coded. So it makes it easy for lawyers to um, read their templates as well and empowers those lawyers to make changes to their contract templates, to act on that data, that intelligence about the usage of individual clauses, and then do re-baselining of their templates. Uh, in fact, in, in, this, in this example, the VivaTech lawyer is modifying the contract template to bring in the clause from the clause library, that fallback that is consistently being used in negotiation, bringing that fallback into the template, building a rule around that to say, okay, use this um, uh, for deals over uh, a certain value. So really excited to um, uh, make a dramatic step forward in, uh, in the way in which our customers are, are designing their contract templates. So yeah. Uh, I think hopefully, Richard, you, 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 you can see that we're opening up an exciting new world of connected experiences. I think this may be the first uh, product walkthrough where I haven't actually shown you um, the product, but the connected experiences around that platform. And uh, we're really excited to be sort of moving on this journey from legal tech to enterprise tech and building these connected experience so that you know our customers can be working uh, with contracts in in the tools that they know and that they trust as well just a couple of quick questions um first of all this is all running through uh microsoft this is all running through teams and associated uh microsoft products yeah are you building in slack or is effectively teams teams is effectively replacing the need for that Slack is definitely on our roadmap. Um, it's where we want to go next. 
Um, we started with teams, um, but the approach in which we've taken for teams will translate really well to Slack as well. And, and given the focus in this release on, you know, you've seen two major ecosystems here with our connected experience, the Microsoft ecosystem with Teams and Word. Um, uh, we've got this Salesforce managed package. Obviously now that Slack is part of Salesforce, um, uh, we'll, we, 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 you know, we will be building out that, that Slack capability as well. Gotcha, gotcha. Well, it, it looks like you've covered off most of the core bases anyway with, with Microsoft and Salesforce. So uh, you, know, you haven't left too much um, undone. Um, in terms of the, the use of playbooks and past uh, document templates and past documents to, to use as material to compare, what the new contract um, appears like um, is is that is that part of the new the new version that you so you you've souped up some of your NLP capabilities there. So we have had a similarity engine that, um, uh, for some time now in the platform, and you know we're using that in the search for um, clauses that match the current clause clauses coming from the clause library or clauses coming from contracts that exist within the repository. Got you, got you. So that part hasn't changed. It's more of a way that it connects to all the other parts. It is about connecting those experiences. We have delivered in this release some uh, additional further capabilities in the core Agileoff platform itself, some further design improvements, some further AI improvements. But the main focus of this release is that connected experiences. Got you, got you. And just, just a personal question out of interest. I mean, is Salesforce where very, very large contract types uh, begin? I mean, I can imagine regular sales contracts, you know, running through Salesforce. But, you know, would you see really major, like million dollar plus contracts running, initiating in Salesforce? Yes, I think so. You know, we, we like to look at the entire workflow, not just from the initiation of the contract request through to sign in and managing the contract that is typically the remit of a CLM solution. But you have to look at the data flows and um, uh, the workflows that exist prior to the initiation of that contract. That might be responding to an RFP, that might be creating the quote, um, so a lot of those activities are happening in other tools like Salesforce. Um, so the data exists that, you know, we want that data to be flowing directly into the contract request. So, um, yeah, uh, many of our customers are initiating their contract requests from that data set within Salesforce. And like I mentioned, we've had that data integration for some time. What we're, we're doing with this release is packaging up those best practices in terms of data mapping um, uh, and making it uh, far easier for our customers to then deploy that integration into their Salesforce environment. Gotcha. So just last two questions. So th this will all effectively happen seamlessly. So customers, they'll just effectively have this new version when they sort of log on. And I guess the second question is, how much of an impact will this have? I mean, in terms of, you know, improved efficiency and so forth. Yeah, I think the impact uh, certainly around um, reducing those cycle times is, uh, with, it, with uh, those negotiation cycle times with the improved design and workflow in Microsoft Word, I think um, our customers will see you know, big efficiency gains there. I think there will be significant efficiency gains in being able to turn around template changes more quickly with the, the redesigned template designer for Word. Um, and then, you know, for the data flows, these are, you know, so important to have those data flows coming in um, from the likes of Salesforce. We also have a connector for uh, dynamic CRM. Um, you know, those are fundamentally important parts of this connected system of record strategy that many of our customers are, are pursuing. Uh, interesting, interesting. Well, we could have an interesting debate there about capturing data at the point of creation and, you know, doing it with a, uh, a platform such as Salesforce, which is designed to capture that data, as opposed to coming in later with NLP to then try and extract out that key data and so forth. But, uh, well, well, I, well, I haven't mentioned it. Let's talk about it. I mean, presumably you're coming down on the let's do it at the point of extraction with a system that's designed to capture that data in the first place. Yeah, there are really two main workflows that are coming to the point where a contract is being 
uh, entered into a CLM system like Agileoft, uh, it's either going to be initiated from that company, from their templates, in which case a structured data will keep it structured, will keep it structured even when it's being negotiated in Microsoft Word by tagging uh, those clauses that are, are, are created um, and, and you know, tracking their usage and tracking the differences and changes to those clauses. So that's one route that I often refer to, refer to as on our paper. Uh, and then the other route is dealing with contracts from the other side and third party paper, which is typically more common in um, buy side scenarios. Um, uh, so for, for their um, uh, extraction of information from that contract and tagging of that contract as it goes into the Agile of CLM solution would be important um, because that structure might not exist. I still uh, dream of this future world where the interoperability between multiple CLM systems would enable us, no matter where the contract initiated from, would enable two CLM solutions to be able to keep that data structured throughout its life cycle. Um, you know, it, it's very likely that those contracts are originating from templates, that at some point there is data and structure about the contents of those templates. You know, we should be interchanging that data between multiple CLM solutions, but we're probably some way off that just yet. And for now, there are tools like AI to help us with that extraction. Interesting. Well, I mean, you, you just mentioned something, you know, it's very uh, close to my heart, which is standardization and cooperation across the, the legal market. I mean, that would be amazing. Now, I think you effectively, without wanting to, you've just begun the process of uniting all CLM uh, systems together. Um, you know, we could create this kind of data standard. Everyone jumps on, everyone agrees to share data so that we can avoid all these problems. But, you know, we could start small. It could be in, um, could be on a template by template basis. You know, perhaps it's everyone agreeing that the one NDA template and its data set is something that we can exchange data on. So I think there are places where we could start small. Fantastic. Thanks very much, Andy. Well, good luck with the launch and I uh, hope to speak to you very soon. Thank you very much. Thanks, Richard.